thought it'd be kind of interesting to show some of the versatility of the table saw by making a picture frame with some rather uh, unique profiles. So for example, I'm going to make one now with a complex profile. If I can show it out here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and using the table saw, cut a rabbit there. That's going to go ahead and be used where the picture will be fit into place. And then the profile, I'll go ahead and clip the corners. That's simple enough. But to make it a little more interesting, I think I'm going to go ahead and go down and have a bit of a stair step right over here. And then clip that end back up at an angle as well. While I'm at it, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and clip this side too. We'll see if that works out. You'll see how it all works out when I'm done. But all of this can be done without a router and any other unique tools. It's able to be done just with a table saw. I've gone ahead and drawn out the profile a little nicer on this piece of paper. What I'm going to do is cut notches one, two, and then three, which will be done just by making straight cuts uh, with the blade at set of different heights. Cuts number four and five will be used to cut out the rabbit. Cuts six uh six seven and eight and nine will all be used to go ahead and cut those uh beveled edges so it's all pretty simple i'll go ahead and do it now first thing i'm going to do is set the height of the blade what i'd like to do is work on that first cut which is right over here which is the deepest one so i'm going to use a bunch of spacer blocks which i use routinely to set the height all i've got to do is lower the blade until it reaches the height. In this case, I'm using a 9 16 inch block and get it pretty close because this particular frame, it's not gonna be rocket science. It's just gonna be close to what I'm trying to get. I'll go ahead, line the fence up so that way I've got a nice amount of space in there. And then I'll go ahead, put in some feather boards and make the cut. With the feather boards in place to both keep the workpiece pressed down against the table and also push up against the fence, I'm ready to go. Next, I'm going to go ahead, lower the blade about a sixteenth of an inch, and slide the fence over about one saw curve's worth. Using the piece I already cut, I just slide the fence over until it lines up with the previous cut off to one side. I'll go ahead and repeat that. This time I'll lower the uh, blade down to about 5 16th of an inch, push the fence over, and make one more cut. There's the uh, stair step cut into it. I'll go ahead and start working on uh, the next cuts to go ahead and make this rabbit. I want the dado that I cut out to be about a quarter of an inch in and a quarter of an inch up. I've gone ahead and set my fence so that way the outside of the blade is a quarter of an inch away from the fence. The reason being is when I make the cut, the saw kerf 
has to be taken into consideration. So by measuring to the outside, I know I've got the right size. I'm actually not going to be making both of the cuts, even though they're the same dimensions, um, with the fence set here for safety reasons, which I'll show you in a moment. But I'm gonna go ahead and make the first cut, which is going to, I'm gonna go ahead and do this way because it's safe and easy to go ahead and set up the fence to do that. And then I'll show you how I make the second cut and release that little piece of wood off the bottom. The next cut will be down on the bottom and it'll release this piece of wood right here. But if I make the cut by just sliding the piece along this way, that piece of wood is going to get trapped inside between the blade and the fence, which makes for a dangerous situation. So I'm actually going to go ahead and switch this around where I move the fence out. I switch around the wood and I'm going to go ahead and line up the blade so that way it'll go ahead and make the cut with that loose piece of wood on the outside. And when I cut it, that piece will be able to be released and slide away from the fence instead of being jammed into it. When I make this cut, I'm not going to be using a feather board like I normally do. The reason being is that feather board will end up pushing in the loose piece when it comes off. So I'll just be holding it by my hand here until I need to, and then I'll just push the wood right past the, uh, the blade. So there's my rabbit and the loose piece of wood that came off. All right, I set the blade to 45 degrees and raised it just a little bit. Looking at the profile, you don't want to cut in too deep and cut across to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and cut these inner corners right now. The reason I'm doing the inner corners before the outside corners is that the outside corners are actually helping to support the piece flat against the table. So therefore, by leaving it as wide of a profile as possible, I end up with a safer cut and have more control over uh, the movement of the wood across the blade. Planning ahead of time all your cuts and the order of them can really help uh, prevent a big hassle uh, downstream and also keep things a lot safer. I'll go ahead and line up the fence, just eyeballing it and seeing where I need to go ahead and clip this corner. Now that I've gone ahead and clipped this side, I'll do the same thing on the other. To clip the outside corners, I'm actually gonna go ahead and raise the blade up until it's over the top of the piece. And then I'll be able to slide the fence over and eyeball where I go ahead and like to make the bevel and I make the cut on both sides. <laughs> 